All right, we're live. Welcome everybody out to our essential oil class, um, wellness class, I should say, uh, recognizing a healing crisis. This basically, a lot of people run into situations where they begin to heal and they, they um, are starting to feel all these strange emotions and, and um, you know, starting to confront things that, they, that have been buried for a while. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, some, sometimes they just, you know, give up or start running away or they don't know what's happening. And so that's what our discussion is on tonight. Mm -hmm. And so I'll turn the time over to Jade. She's prepared a few words for us. Yeah. So thank you guys for joining us today. This is a very important topic. If you are using oils or sharing oils with people, sooner or later you will come across this experience and um, I just want you to be prepared and know what it is about and how to help people if you if they're facing this problem so and sometimes we're, sh we're sharing this yeah we're sharing that okay. sometimes all people need to know is that this exists and, and they're, they're fine they're happy to hold on and write it write it out but yep. if they don't know about it then it's, it's, they're in the dark yep so guys we are um, you know, mind, body, and, and spirit creatures. So everything we do in one um, level will affect the other level and vice versa. So um, it's, it's always like this. Uh, so if you have, um, uh, you know, you've been using essential oils and you've been drinking it, smelling it, rubbing it on, etc. anything natural, even if it's herbs and, um, you know, other herbal remedies, it will... Uh, open up your cells and it helps your cells release toxins and along with the toxins it'll help release emotions as well so sometimes we have an emotional catharsis or a healing crisis and some of you have probably heard about this before right um, so I want to hear from you what your experiences are you know if you've had an emotional catharsis or just want to hear uh, what what you think Debbie. Do you want to hear about mine? Do you remember, Jade? A yeah. year a year ago, February. And I can't even remember what oils I was using at the time. But I got violently ill. Um, just throwing up and all kinds of stuff. To the point where I almost lost consciousness. And I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital. That's how bad it was. I'd never been sick like that. And it came on really fast. Well, fairly fast. I just kind of felt icky through the day. And then it just slammed and hit me. Anyway, um, my, my daughter, I just laid on the bathroom floor. And she, I told her what oils to get and to just keep putting them on me every 15 minutes. And she did probably. And then I finally was able to get up and just go lay in bed. And she just came in and kept putting oils on me through the evening. And then um, I slept. I slept and slept and slept and then woke up the next day and I felt great. I just felt a little weak. But I felt 100% better than I did before. And But I knew like something was going on. And I remember texting you, Jade, and I'm like, help me figure out what's going on. And you told me I'm like, like an emotional detox. That's what was happening. There were a lot of changes going on for me. That's right. For, anyway, so you're at, that's awesome, Debbie, because you were at a crossroad was weren't you. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's, that's what happens to most of us. When we make a different decision, we're changing the way we do things, any sort of change in our physical life and our body too, it, it opens up the door to emotional catharsis. And um, it can be uncomfortable like that, right? Yeah. Uh, I think a few years ago when I started using the oils, I had um, tell, I told Ben that I did some emotional healing with this uh, one Reiki master. And, uh, you know, I said, she said, just be careful, you know, um, take it easy. And if you do have, you know, a lot of emotions come up, just let it out. And I think within like half the day, I think within the day, of, I sat down and I broke down and cried and I started rocking and rocking. And um, 
Ben was aware, he was very sharp and he was aware that it was just what it is, just the emotional catharsis. So he didn't have to fix the problem. So he held me and I rocked and I cried and I just mumbled all sorts of things. Just, you know, I was trying to figure out what's happening, but it was like half an hour of tears. And then, you know, when I came to, <laughs> I thought, wow, what was that? <laughs> like, whoa. But it really helps you because it's sort of like peeling out of off a layer. It's like metamorphosis. It's like a um, butterfly coming out of its uh, cocoon and you're a totally different person. And now looking back, yeah, I've gone through that but not so, you know, extreme in, in a small way here and there. But I look back and I think, I don't recognise the person that I was 10 years ago, right? Who was that person? You know, I, I was scared of speaking in public. I couldn't share my thoughts. I couldn't put words together. And so now, um, you know, I've been able to grow and change. And I think this is very important. So the important thing is, we, we don't um, freak out about the emotional catharsis or the he emotional healing um, and it's physical healing too, okay? And we'll talk about the physical healing part. Um, that we and, and also some people, for a lot of people, um, natural remedies are a new way of approaching uh, their health and it's something they're really excited about. Yeah. But And then they run into something like this and they're like, they look, look through their life and they're like, oh, this is the change that I've been making. And, and yeah, you look unfortunately, back. Unfortunately, yeah. they start to back out on it because um, yeah. at first it was like a a, a new road they were going down, and but unfortunately, that it, it was just a sign of their healing. Yes, it and is. not really. Um, yeah. So sometimes people use just a little bit of oils, and then they go through all of this emotional catharsis, and they think, "Oh, I'm allergic," or um, "I've overdosed." I've heard that before too. Mm. And I think um, that's not quite, um, you know, how it works. But, you know, you have to allow people to respond the way they want to respond. But I, I try to explain it to people. So one time I uh, actually was with Debbie um, Westcott. We were uh, teaching a class and I opened the bottle of Melissa oil. And this one beautiful woman, <laughs> she started bursting out in tears and started crying. And she held onto the table. She was that um, emotional and uh, she said what was that what was that oil and I was like uh, <laughs> it's Melissa and we looked up the emotion and she was like yep that's everything that's happening now so sometimes we we get to a crossroad and we're ready to ch take the plunge but when we're not ready <laughs> quite ready um, you know the oils can open the doors and allow all of the negative energy out so that we can be free to to take that next step and to change in that next way. I think this especially um, happens like when you're doing a detox, for instance, yes. or aroma touch technique. I remember yes. one, in, during one of our aroma touch classes, um, this I think half this of lady. my aroma touch <laughs> trainings, we have people crying, so everyone watch out. <laughs> Just start crying um, yeah. uncontrollably. And yes. We just let them take their... You know, we just explain to them what's happening and yep. let them take their time. And, and I tell people if you do feel like crying, and they come it's out safe. the other side much better off. Yeah, <laughs> probably yeah. lighter too. I, that could be a, an experiment. We could weigh them as they come in, and then they let them do their crying and then weigh them afterwards. And, uh, <laughs> Two pounds of tears. <laughs> no, it's just emotional um, energy. And I've had people cry and then they do text me the next day and they say, oh, I lost this many pounds. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. We've had yeah. that as well. Anybody else, that, has anybody else experienced this that wants to? When I did my first cleanse, um, the first few days, I just was angry. <laughs> I was angry and irritated at everything and everybody. And I couldn't figure out why because I really didn't have a reason to be. Yeah. And then, like, oh my gosh, I just started this cleanse, and I think it's breaking all this out, and I just have to get it out, or just acknowledge it and let it go, or whatever. But yeah, that was that was an interesting side effect <laughs> to the cleanse. Yeah, yeah. I think all this kind of highlights how much we don't know about emotions and and yes. energy and everything like that, and we're just now yeah, starting to discover these things that. Because yeah. we've lost, lost yeah. hearts sort or of things. That's exactly right. So some of my friends have told me that uh, their eyes are open 
you know, that's, that's another thing that happens after they go through all of this um, discomfort. Uh, when they come to the other side, they feel a sense of relief and they see things differently and they're never the same again. Um, so, you know, okay, this is what you look for. So what does a healing crisis look like and how do we recognize it? So, okay, it's, it's when um, people are detoxing and doing something natural and cleansing and um, you're, sometimes you're at a crossroad too, okay? But there's some things that you can look for. So they're, they're more emotional than usual. Like Kayla said, sometimes you're more angry or just sad. Um, and it's, it's, that emotion is seeking for um, attention and resolution. So, you know, she can look within and go, oh, what's all that about? Whoa. And she, it, it, you see it, you recognize it. That's something different. Whoa, what was that? Um, it's not about somebody who is negative and adding more to that fire of negativity and just keeping that negative outlook in life. You know, you've seen people who are negative, they list out negative things. It's, that's not an emotional detox. But, you know, you have to be um, looking at something that, uh, I don't know, I can't explain it quite, quite right right now, but it looks different to how you have been. Okay, so if you've been chillaxed before, if you've, you know, it's just not you. Uh, then that's that's an emotional detox, okay? Um, and also functions, body functions change. Sometimes people go to the bathroom more. Uh, one lady, she said, I went uh, nine times today. <laughs> and, well, good, okay. And um, sometimes we just release that way. And um, sometimes more thirsty. We're, we're more angry and nauseous about something, I think. Ben did a, an emotional healing one time and he just felt like, I want to throw up. I just really want to throw up. But nothing came out, but it was just energy and, um, you know, air, right? Um, anxiety and other emotions or tiredness, uh, dry eyes, rashes, even and stuffy nose, headaches. It can be anything. Uh, so one of my friends, she was um, taking the oils, using it and feeling great for the first year. And nothing happened, you know, because her body was happy and she was still in the same situation. She's just getting healthy and happier. And then one day she's like, no, I, I'm going to change. I'm going to come to church and, and um, be more spiritual and, and do all these things. And as soon as she said that, you know, she started rashing all over her body, her skin. And I'm thinking, that's so strange. It wasn't that way for the last year, if, you know, but because she's making some change. And we ended up... Um, finding out that it was because she felt um, she judged herself. She felt like she was unworthy and um, you know, it's what she is on the outside. And of course your physical body kind of manifests the emotion. So, you know, as soon as we figured that out, um, you know, it started to go away on its own, but this whole time ointments and more lotions and potions, it didn't do anything. It just kept on, you know, releasing and releasing, which is good because for her, she needed to purge all that negativity, all of the um, excuses that she's used in the past to, to not allow herself to progress. Now, when people are, especially when people are going through the detox and they're detoxing um, their body, their digestive system and everything, and they run into this, um, it's good to just take things easy. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, um, you know, especially with like the, the cleanse, you, you are putting a lot of essential oils into you and everything. Um, lighten up. Just, uh, you know, reduce the number of pills that you're taking. Yeah. Maybe just drink some lemon oil and, Take and some water. Take a lot of things off your plate. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, it, it would be the wrong thing to do to stop cold turkey. And, mm -hmm. and um, but yeah. you can, it's not, it's not an either or. You can um, vary the, uh, the amount. Yeah. So, so it's too fast, too much for you. you yeah, if it's, exactly, exactly. If it's too much coming on too fast, just reduce things and, and, and take it easy. So that, yeah. that's how you would, you should react. you're actually doing a lot of work on the inside, right? And spiritually, you, you're changing a lot too, even though you feel like, um, I'm you know, taking it easy. Things are happening under the surface. So, um, and, and also with the 30 day cleanse, that's on a regimented thing. So mm -hmm. some, sometimes people have a question, well, you know, I'm supposed to take this many pills at this time on this day and this many pills on this time on this day. You know what? Those are more like a guideline. You can you can uh, adjust that to your uh, individual situation. We have people that sometimes take more. Yes, I um, do. Sometimes um, 
people will feel like they don't take taking less they don't need as much or mm-hmm. they're they run into something like this mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's okay you can still t- stay true to that 30-day regimen and so if you have some sort of um catharsis i would um recommend that we don't overthink it because sometimes it's like a whole flood of stuff so you can't pick one emotion you know like kayla was saying it's just anger and irritation so what's all that you know it's a whole ball of mixed emotions so just let it out don't have to over analyze it um and it, that way your body is more relaxed okay and, and let it pass and it will resolve soon okay <coughs> So how long does it last? I get this question all the time. This is difficult to answer because everybody will be different and it depends on how fast you want to change. Um, Sometimes it's an episode that is very short within a day or so. It's a moment of tears and then you're over it. Um, Other times it's just on, um, you know, on and off, on and off, on and off. But every time you do, you have an emotional catharsis or, a healing crisis of any sort you're, you're changing and you're you're better than you were before uh, so we will be healing all our lives so that's the answer really but if you're talking about the moments and things or the rashes and whatever it depends on the person and it depends on how relaxed you are and what the issue is what you've buried deep um, and uh, how much of it you're willing to let out okay but we have a few tips here to help you, okay? Um, so if you can allow yourself to um, heal energetically. So if you have that emotion book, right, look up the oils that you're using, okay? And look at the emotions that go with that oil that you're using. So uh, for example, the black pepper. So if you've been using black pepper and something's happening inside, you can help yourself release the negative emotion okay and negative um false beliefs and then re-script your mind so recondition your mind and say things like i allow myself to heal from being judgment and from being judgmental or um uh, i'm safe and i am aware of myself now so when you allow that you're helping the oils do its job by of cleansing your system okay Anyone have any questions or comments so far? I think Erin. Yes, Erin. Right. I just wanted to let you know that wintergreen helped my friend. So okay. that rat did go away. Fantastic. Um, I'm mm-hmm. going to explain to you guys, um, if you have people that have, um, that are going through the detox and they started to get rashes, it's because of stubbornness. Um, because when we're stubborn, we stop the toxins from being released through our fecal matter, through urine, um, through that channel. So our body's forced to push it through our skin. Okay. So if we allow them to, um, we allow ourselves to be more flexible. Of course, that's less stubborn, less being will, less willful. Uh, then suddenly our body will let things go the right direction, <clears throat> and not out. Okay. <clears throat> Does that make sense? All right, because, uh, you know, we get, we still want to hold on and we want to control. And so when we can't control, we get irritated. And so the toxins come out through our skin. And when we allow ourselves to relax and trust and surrender to God, universe, you know, all the toxins go the right direction, go down. (laughs) So can I share something really quick? This is happening right now. She's not here, but my daughter, Carson. It's interesting that we're talking about this, but she's had some bug bites recently, but they are welting like big, like they're not normal. You know what I mean? And she's like, mom, what am, what's happening? But it's very true. She's being, she's very willful and angry and about some situations and being very stubborn doesn't want to let go of it doesn't want to be free of it she just kind of is like feeding off of it so do you think that that's related to that she's not letting because she's never had bug bites behave like that before on her body 
Yeah. And if, of course, any time we have an opening, that's where our body likes to concentrate and say, hey, here's a, here's a door. So let's throw all the toxins out this way. Um, okay. The winter green is the oil of surrender. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you think about poop, okay, food, you know, it goes into our system and it stays in our um, gut and intestines and it, they, our body absorbs what it needs to absorb, right? And then it flushes it out. So when you eat, you stimulate digestion and then it goes, right? So we're supposed to poop three times a day at least. So when we are stubborn, it's like our body saying, wait, 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 I haven't squeezed all the juices or the, you know, everything out of this yet. I don't know if I can let it all go yet. Because I haven't, I haven't wrapped my head. I haven't understood all of this yet. Let me, let me control all this um, instead of letting things flow. Okay. So I've noticed a lot of people. I mean, I've muscle tested people with uh, stubbornness, and I say it's in the colon, and they're like, "Really?" One lady, she said, um, "I said you go to the bathroom she said, nah, uh, once every two days," and then I say, "Well, this is sort of inherited too from your dad." she's like oh my gosh my dad died of colon cancer right and he was a very stubborn man and so you can see that once you hold on and hold on hold on i mean the the yuckies is going to fester there the energy is going to be stuck there things are not going to flow okay so winter green is wonderful and what we did with this one particular lady is um i suggested we we soak <laughs> we soak um epsom salt warm water soak and uh, just relax everything, relax the muscles, relax, relax the mind and let God take over. Okay. I don't have to know everything. I'll figure it all of that out as I go along, but this is all I, I got from, from today, from now. That's all I need. Yeah. Okay. So, um, we can, um, so I have here, so when you've gone through the healing crisis, you'll feel like a different person before long. Your body will want to do more healing and then you'll be faced with more healing crisis. So it's just, just when you feel like, Hey, it's all good. I'm happy. You get another challenge. So don't be surprised and don't be upset with yourself. Just take it um, for what it is. It's another opportunity to change and heal. And it's just another way for you to be happier. Okay, if we start shedding uh, layers of, of yuckies, it, we will become a better person. It's sort of like, you know, polishing a diamond until you're nice and sparkly. Um, it's very important that we do some emotional release with the oils, and it's very simple. Our mind is very intelligent. We can look it up in the emotion book, whatever oil we're using, what, the oils that are causing us to, to feel this way, um, and we can help it along, All right? So, um, Anytime we feel stubbornness, willfulness, and pride, it's, uh, it stops us from uh, fully letting go of those emotions. We're holding on because we're like, I don't get why I'm so upset. Just let it go. Let it go. Because it could be anything from your childhood or the generational inheritance. So, okay. And then your physical body will release the toxins faster too. So it's sort of like it holding on because you, you are holding on. But once you let things go, let it roll off your back, toxins are released left and right really, really quickly. Okay. Uh, we're, when we're constipated, for example, we're constipated in the mind and mentally and spiritually, and, and it manifests through uh, our physical body. Okay. So the, one, the other oils besides wintergreen you can use is oregano and arborvitae, sandalwood, whisper, and cardamom. So those are the really good oils and you can look up the emotions to go with that. Of course, help, help the energy move out uh, by journaling your thoughts and feelings and meditation. Um, I, I'll put up very soon uh, meditation for the elements. Okay, so the different elements inside our bodies. I have it written, but I, you know, I have to feel good about it before I share it. <laughs> so anyways, it's coming soon, guys. Um, Yep, so when we release all the yuckies, our body is able to produce more happy hormones, happy chemicals, and uh, of course you start to, to heal. Um, so hormones like, um, you know, and chemicals like the oxytocin, nitric oxide, dopamine, endorphins. Yep. 
Okay, so I'll pause here. Anyone with questions or comments? Um, I had this happen before, and then I'm glad that you said earlier that, um, like, even though you, you do it, that it can happen again because it happened and then it happened again. And then I didn't realize it, but I was using some other oils, and then I've been using it regularly. And so it makes sense now that, because you don't really realize that it's happening sometimes. No. You're just like, why am I so upset or, you know, whatever. Then the next, you know, night or that night or the next day, you're like totally packed. Like you're just not, you're like, why did that bother? You know, why was that so big? And then I'm like, well, maybe, maybe I was, <laughs> you know. And so I kind of didn't realize that, you know, it can, it can just continue to happen the more you do it. And, but at the same time, I mean, it's good because then you work through other things. It changes the way of looking at it. And then you're able to just be calm and move past this thing. And even if you weren't really trying, it just kind of like releases you. And then you're free of, like, you kind of find the answer and, you know, a problem that you didn't really know that you were dealing with sometimes. So, um, but I'm glad that you pointed that out because I was wondering if that's what it was a few days ago. And now I'm like, well, yeah, I guess so, because it kind of just resolved shortly after. Yeah. And, um, but it's good to know because you will know that you keep on cleansing yourself and especially like some of the things that are um, generational. I guess it's not only you holding on to it. It's kind of like going to take a little bit longer because it's been passed down sort of, you know? So I think that that's one thing that I'm grateful for, even though I wasn't expecting it again. So no, I'll give you a, a, an invitation saying tomorrow we'll have this lovely emotional catharsis. <laughs> it just sneaks up on you. How, um, you know, unexpected or it's not a good time. Hello. <laughs> and especially when it's not a good time, when you're making changes, when too many things are happening at once and it's a, it's just amazing. But I can say that looking back, I'm so grateful for every experience because I, I, I'm a new person every time. Yeah. So, uh, especially when people start with the oils, it's just, uh, um, a couple of people, um, when they start using the oils very uh, quickly within the first week, you know, they experience some lovely experiences and then it's just, like a cold like symptom and then they they cry and all sorts of things and even if you're using the oils um you still has to go through its course and uh, so you just allow it but like i said you can help it along by going what oils am i using okay these are the emotions that i'm healing from okay what's the next one and help it along and say hey accept and allow okay i'll think that way um and then things will go faster and with today nowadays um with me, I do the same things. When I feel the anxiety or the stress or whatever that's coming up, I'm thinking, where did that come from? I'm feeling, you know, just it's not making sense in my mind. It's not, it suddenly came upon me. So I just muscle test what emotion is that? Okay, let it go. And boom, within a half an hour, I'm different. And I'm able to go, well, oh, that's gone. That's good. <laughs> um, but then you're better. So, um, so what happens if, we refuse to go through the healing. What happens when people stop and say, look, it's too much for me. I don't want it. Goodbye. Um, basically, you suppress the emotion again. All right. And if you suppress, if, you know, people say, stop. I, I'm, I had a lady say, um, I'm taking a break from using oils. <laughs> you know, well, how do you do that? <laughs> so, um, you know, you can go back to the ointments and the headache medicines and other things too. But it's just numbing your your receptors, numbing your brain, so that you don't feel it anymore. Um, your signals are not sending out; it's sending out still, but you're not receiving those signals, and um, you'll be frustrated in the end uh, you, because your problems have not been resolved. And sometimes you'll have what, you, the same health problems that repeat and repeat, and then you manage symptoms again, and then it repeats and repeats. Even if we manage symptoms with the oils. It will still repeat. So one lady, she has really bad um, 
fungus infection inside, um, rashes a lot. And, uh, you know, I said, you're going to do a cleanse. You've got this concern. But she's like, no, I'll just use the G exorcist every day. And I think that's nice, but, you know, you, you can help it along. So she's used it every, for the last couple of years, every day. And I think, well, you know, you could actually move along faster and progress faster if you allow the emotion of, um, you know, these oils to help you. Okay, the energy of the emotions. Okay, so we will actually experience Groundhog Day over and over again if we don't allow ourselves to heal emotionally and face it eventually. Okay, so you're gonna attract the same problems, attract the same people, attract the same situations over and over again. Not fun. But sometimes people need Groundhog's Day to shake them up a little bit and say, hey, I see a pattern now. <laughs> and you think, okay, ready for a change. I'm not gonna allow this pattern to repeat. Um, and then we would do, we actually get out of that rut and finally escape from that, okay? So it is worth it, guys. You know, even though it's uncomfortable at first, it is worth it. So with my friend with a rash, um, as soon as she says, no, I'm not going to let anything stand in my way of going back to church or whatever it is, suddenly her, her skin cleared up and she was like, what was that? You know, she had months and months, and I think six months to, I don't know, almost a year of just horrid rash that, that crust over her face and her arms and legs. And she said, I can't face people when I go to church. What do they think of me? And I said, does it matter? You know, if you were to face God now, is it going to matter? And she said, no. And then finally she's like, oh, oh. And um, within a week or so, everything cleared up and she's happy now. She's like, why didn't I do that years ago? Why don't I just, you know, serve God and go back like that years ago? So she was really happy that she's gone through it now. And um, she learned her lesson. She learned um, what the fears were inside of her and understood herself better. All right. So uh, that's all I have to say about this, guys. So uh, welcoming um, discussion if you have any questions or comments. Um, but that's it for healing crisis. It's an important part of our healing. Um, it, it's ugly sometimes, but sometimes we have to, you know, it has to happen before the pretty. Mm -hmm. I do remember that um, early, like a few months after we were using the oils, I asked you, and my son was getting sick, and you said, whatever you do, tell him not to stop. And so I said, hey, I asked Jade. She said, don't stop because you're working through a lot of things. And he was like, I don't know if I can. I said, well, I don't know, but I just wouldn't stop. And you said, well, it's probably just going to last, you know, a few days. It won't last very long. In a week, he'll be better. And so I was like, look, just it's, it's better to do this than to get back to where you were. And then you're going to have to do this the same again. So you're halfway through this. Let's just go through it. And he was like, okay, I hope she's right. And then after he was like, I'm all better. I'm so glad I did it. And then um, he's like, you know, exactly what she said. Like it was his stomach. And then and he said, it was, it was fine. It wasn't that bad the next day. It's just the first day. And then it got better and better. And, um, and I, I just remember that because then when I started feeling that uneasiness, I had to tell myself, wait a minute, I told him to just hang with it. So I'm just gonna hang with it and just get through. But I saw what he meant because the other time it wasn't the same for me. It was, um, the only physical thing I ever felt was the stuffiness, like you said. Yeah. Other than that, it was just um, emotions kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing that, that's right. You're like, okay, not pretty, but it had to happen. <laughs> Anybody else? Jade, can you address how a healing crisis might manifest itself in a child? Okay. One of um, my friends, she wasn't using very much oils, but um, I think her, her son, she just had the breathe oil in the diffuser and her son was bouncing off the walls. And she was like, this is so unusual because it's bedtime. You usually <laughs> will go to sleep. And, um, you know, it was just, ah. And I think that's just energy releasing. And the next day she did the same. She put the breathe oil in his diffuser before he went to bed. But, and then he was calm and he just went to bed. So sometimes the kids will um, act differently than they would do normally. And you just have to let it go. But you know for yourself that you're not using like a ridiculous amount of oils. You're not hurting them in any ways. 
it's just triggering some things in within them okay and you know we don't have to go stop 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 we just let it pass let it through go yeah what about do you debbie do you have other experiences um is ashley still on here I yep so. you there ashley yes can you share your can you share your story show your story with your son what's going on right now yeah and how long has it been going on um so he's had um an ear infection since november in march we got a referral to the ent so um i i mean i've used basil and on guard and frankincense and i've tried the go-to things that i can think of um which is pretty superficial i mean if i'm being honest i don't i don't know enough about all the oils to really concoct something grand but that's mm -hmm. the, that's what i've got and then um he's in addition to that been on antibiotics and um his pediatrician just said this this is it this is all we've done everything that we can do and now we just have to wait for the ENT so the referral was in March and he can't be seen until the end of June so his eardrums already perfed once um, and it just it's it's just icky <laughs> okay so have you done any um so how old is he sorry he just turned two okay um have you done any emotional healing with him no and i hadn't i hadn't thought about it um because well i i don't that's something that i struggle with for myself i guess i wouldn't even know where to start with my kid <laughs> good question with um, if you look up the uh, books about ears it's uh -huh. about hearing love okay so you can hold your son and say you can hear love mm -hmm. love and if it's like a big deep problem like this um, you just take out the big guns so some of the big guns are Melissa yeah and black pepper okay, okay. So you can warm it up in your hands and hold it, you know, behind the, the bones of the ears. Mm -hmm. and you can hear love. You can hear love. And love is all around you. You can hear love. And, you know, um, just repeat it for him. And uh -huh. go with that. Because sometimes, even if we give ourselves nutrients and healthy foods, if our body refuses to accept love, right. um, it refuses to assimilate. So it's sort of like all the way through and you think, uh, right. <laughs> yeah. why hasn't it worked? Because they just can't accept that. If, no, I don't deserve that. Okay. So it's not difficult with emotional healing, all right, but everything that we have in our system, everything's fixed with love. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Love. Okay. So if it's, he it is, it's, I, I can hear love. Mm -hmm. Right. I can speak love. I can, I can say loving words or I, you know, I can um, hear God loving me and mm -hmm. whatever it is, you know, I, I can speak my, from my heart. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, uh, on the emotional healing side, I have more questions, but I'm thinking that's probably better for after the recording's mm -hmm. done. Yep, for sure. Okay. Yep, fantastic. Thank you for sharing, Ashley. Yeah. I just want to pipe in one thing here, and that's that whenever we feel like we've done everything we know how to do, and we're just completely, it's over our head, we, we, we have no place to turn. It's always an emotional. <laughs> and so we, we got to look beyond the physical symptoms, because when we throw our hands in the air and say, I can't do this anymore, this, this has got to stop, I'm all done. I've done everything I know to do. We've got to uncover, we've got to peel the onion. We've got to get to the emotions. 
And I think this experience with Amen. Ashley's two-year-old is, is um, important too. That it, it applies to everybody. Yeah. We have guys saying that they don't have any emotions. <laughs> <laughs> there are old people that feel like they're beyond that or they, don't, they can't understand that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Or little children who, you know, it's not just their emotions, but emotions that they picked up from some, somewhere else. Right. Parents and family. And yeah. And they interpret it differently too. So maybe you guys have, you know, got, she got it down. You know, sometimes maybe some of the parents have a heated discussion, but they got over it. But the kids are like, oh, my mom and dad are going to get divorced forever. <laughs> mm. And uh, yeah, they, they interpret things differently. So I wouldn't go blaming myself too quickly because um, kids see the, the world differently too. Right. Mm -hmm. And there are even some holistic pr uh, practitioners that go would go as far as to say that everything that goes along with you physically has an emotional root. Oh yeah, I love that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Plus, we just sleep. If you have some sort of catharsis, I like sleep. It just we just <laughs> sleep. <laughs> That's a good way to do it too. <laughs> sleep's a good reset mm -hmm. a yeah good way to reset and you, sometimes your body says i don't know if i can handle this i'm just going to make you sleep and sleep is off mm -hmm. yeah. yep i've seen different reactions mm -hmm. all right thank you so, should so we, much should we stop the recording <laughs> yeah and yep Okay, well, thank you everybody thank you for, so for, coming for coming and, and being a part of this. Um, us. We know that sometimes, um, you know, you might have something you want to share. That's okay. Or you want to attend the recordings and, and um, just, listen, just in. listen in. We're happy, happy, happy to have you here. We love having everybody attend and, and you know, participate. participate. So we're going to go ahead and stop the recording now. We finish each other's sentences. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We haven't finished laughing for each other. <laughs> okay. <laughs>